I've made this first movie so that you can practice some of your windsurfing skills during this coronavirus lockdown. Hope you enjoy it because intuition at the moment is crashing! Unable to travel, I have zero income. So I'm looking for new ways to generate it. It's almost like I'm growing up and I'm actually going to do some admin. I'm going to share my skills with you online with some coaching tutorials, but I do need you to support them. And if I see you supporting them, then I will make more and more movies. But the first one is simply about rigging up. So you can rig up faster, which side of the sail you should be rigging up on, and lots of details. Please enjoy the movie. Please share it with all your windsurfing friends. <laughs> rotational sails, like wave sails, free ride sails that don't have camber inducers. This is how you rig up. By keeping the sail on the ground, the mast will go directly up the loft sleeve in one go. You've probably all experienced, sometimes the mast goes out the side. Keeping the sail actually on the ground, pushing down with the mast tip, it goes all the way through. Pushing down with the mast tip. <laughs> Always apply full downhaul tension before you put the boom on. When you're rigging a wave sail, you should be looking at the baton immediately above the boom cutout. This baton. You can see how much downhaul you're putting on. It should come almost in line with the front of the mast. My baton has been pulled back so it's just behind the front of the mast. Some wave sails you would have it directly in line and some would have it even protruding slightly in front. Next video on tuning your sails will cover that in great detail. Yeah. The other good reason is sail is much safer like this. It's not likely to blow away. And if you put your boom on before you do this, it could be flapping all over the place. Dangerous. The other reason is it's way faster. Normally we need a two-handed easy rigger and we've all got one of these. I suggest you use a bowline and with straight arms, lean back. If you've got strong hands and you're on a soft mast like a 370 for a wave sail, sometimes you can pull it on with your own strength. I've seen alternative advice that says you should only apply a small amount of downhaul and then put your boom on, but that's not the way to do it. This method of full downhaul, then the boom on, is the safest and the fastest method to rig up wave sails and rotational sails. Put your hand inside the cutout to reveal some space. It should go on easily. Most booms don't require any knots. You just pull on the outhaul tension and pull the rope through. Totally rigging and de-rigging the sail within about two minutes. Completely rigged. I guess that was about a minute. This is the correct and fastest way to de-rig. That is two minutes. Pretty good. Try that how fast you can rig and de-rig it. If you know you can rig and de-rig in a couple of minutes, then you'll be far more confident to come in and quickly change the right size gear. Change your rigging life. Camera and juice sail. You may end up using camera and juice sail sometime in the next decade if we are hydrofoil windsurfing. If we ever get out of this lockdown. The mast has to lie on top of all the battens as you push it through the last slit. Contrary to a lot of the manufacturer's guidelines, who suggest that you put half downhaul, then the boom on with full outhaul, and then put the camera juices on, and then pull the downhaul on, that takes forever, and it's such a faff with the boom and the outhaul, um, I suggest this is how you do it. Applied quite a lot of downhaul tension to bend the mast sufficiently to put the cams on. I'm gonna start with the middle two, using my knee to push it on, see my knee there? My hand inside the rough pocket. First one on, second one on, top one on. The bottom one, I'm gonna pressure down onto the baton about in this position. And now they're all on. And now pull the downhole on in full. And you see all the battens are staying on. Have you ever had it that when you rig up, the boom takes for ages to get on? <laughs> or it's real strain to pull on the downhole. <laughs> Well, it may be that you are rigging up brand components that don't match. For example, Neil Pride, Goya, Duoto, North, Nash, Ezzy, Loft Sales, RRD, Gastro. Designed to be rigged up with your right hand forward. My right hand at the front, my left hand at the back. Yeah, Severn Sales and Point Seven. Designed to be rigged up with your left hand forward. If you were to try and match a Severn base with a Neil Pride boom, you're going to run into difficulty because the base from Severn is designed to be rigged up with your left hand forwards and the boom from Neil Pride is designed to be rigged up with your right hand forwards, which is going to make something very fiddly. Either the downhaul is going to be impossible to pull on or the boom is going to be really difficult to put on. Ah, it's a pain in the ass. It's so hard to pull the downhaul off because 
the cleat is pointing downwards, I've got it on the wrong side. Now that the cleat is pointing skyward, everything is going to be easier. Check your base and make sure that your cleat is pointing up. Nil pride bases, nil pride booms are designed to be rigged up with your right hand forwards. You've got to make sure that the tongue here, this tongue of the boom or whatever you want to call it, is underneath the mask. And then the boom slips on super easy. If you rig up on the wrong side, then the tongue is above the mast instead of below. You're having to put your rope underneath the mast, then you've got your boom on the wrong way around. And it's terribly fiddly. Ah. De-rig on the right side too. Details, darling, details. No sand in the mast. It's very advisable. Just put a little bit of tape around the mast at the seal, and that prevents sand getting in there, ensuring that you'll be able to de-rig rather than getting your mast stuck together. A good bit of tape like this, you can leave on one section of the mast for next time. If your mast base and the sail pulleys are at this opposing 90 degree angle, See, that would be parallel, but this is opposing 90 degrees, then this is how you put the downhaul on. Closest to the mast, closest to you. By that, I mean this pulley here is closest to me. Furthest and furthest away. And then up the middle to finish. Now it's going to be way easier to pull on. The end of this rope is not going to go through anything. This kind of white Dyneema rope, either use a couple of drops of super glue or put some tape on it. Now it's perfect. Dollar. Le bolin. Bolin. You can always undo it by pushing that, even after loads of tension. Watching carefully. Pinch it. Pull that round. So it looks like a snake is coming out of a hole. It goes around the palm tree and back down the hole. Voila, le bolin. Most brands have a small pocket to put your excess rope in and keep it tidy. If your sail doesn't have one of those nice little pockets, the best method is to pull the rope through so it's really perfectly cleated. Wrap around a whole bunch of times until you run out of string and do a couple of half inches. Pull it tight. Your boom should go on rock solid. As tight as you can get it. Weight sailing, free weight sailing, freestyle. The stiffness here is really important for your early planing. Minimum movement up and down makes for a very positive feeling. More pop, better jumps, more control. Booms that have this lump here are designed to be used as a loop, loop, go system. That means they're not there and there. Put the loop through, you hook the loop over the knob. <laughs> Pull your out hole tension on. Cleat the rope off through the gap there. It won't come undone. This is the correct place for an upple. They've been specifically designed to go above the boom, around the mast, and tuck it down inside the boom, and that way they fit perfectly in length, function, tight against the mast. Won't catch on your foot straps when your water's starting. You should never attach the upple to the boom arm. If your hands will catch it tacking and jibing and freestyling. They were not designed in length to go on these bits of rope that are supplied with most boom. If you put your upple on the boom as a permanent attachment, then it's saggy and it catches on the foot straps when you water start. If you always want to keep an upple with you so you never forget, the correct way of putting it on is this. Thread it around the loop, not just once, but twice, twice. That way you can always undo it in future. It comes off easily. Otherwise, if you only put it through the once, it gets jammed on there. Thanks for watching. For some, and they're looking for some sus, uh, and they're looking for some sus, suspension they're looking for sus, uh, they are looking for suspension <laughs> The next video planned would be tuning, but I've got loads of other technique training tips that you can do ashore at home in the comfort and safety of your self-isolation.